The Denver Broncos' vision for the 2024 NFL Draft is set. If a quarterback is there that they like, they won't hesitate. We'll break it all down on today's brand new episode, Locked on Broncos. You are Locked on Broncos, your daily Denver Broncos podcast. Part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. What's up, Broncos country? Welcome into a brand new episode of Lockdown Broncos, your daily Denver Broncos podcast, part of the Lockdown Podcast Network, your team every day. Thank you so much to all the everydayers out there in Broncos country who tune in and make us your first listen of the day every single day. Just a reminder, you can get Lockdown Broncos for free on YouTube or wherever you get your podcast. So make sure if you haven't done so already, hit that subscribe or that follow button so you never miss out on what's going on with your favorite team every single day. All year long is the buildup for the NFL draft. We just heard from Broncos head coach Sean Payton and general manager George Payton in Thursday's pre-draft press conference. They gave us a lot of interesting tidbits, but nothing that tips their hand for what they plan to do next week when the Broncos are on the clock here. I'm Cody Rourke, Broncos reporter from Mile High Sports, joined alongside, as always, by Sarah Bettinger, site expert, predominantlyorange.com. Today's episode of Lockdown Broncos is brought to you by Monopoly Go. Embrace your competitive side with Monopoly Go, the mobile hit twist on classic Monopoly. So join your friends and download Monopoly Go, now free on the App Store or Google Play. Sir, just got back not too long ago from the Broncos pre-draft press conference. George Payton, Sean Payton, as we all know, the collective brain trust who's going to be making decisions next week that will impact the state in the future of the Denver Broncos and the number one topic, as I said, I put it out there early on social media. I said, Hey, what's the over under on quarterback questions? I put it at three and a half. Well, if you smash the over, you're a rich, rich person here waking up today. That was the primary topic of discussion in terms of seeing if Sean or George would give anything away about this year's quarterback class. Didn't really get a lot of insight into that as expected, but We do know how they feel about this year's quarterback class in general regarding and excluding specific names. Which is that they think it's seven to eight deep, according to George Payton. And Cody, that number has increased from the last time we heard George Payton speak. I believe the last time he talked about the quarterback, he said five or six, or maybe he just said six. But now it's up to seven or eight. And so I think that, you know, there's there there may be a little something to that. Maybe the Broncos really do like the depth of this class. Certainly there are seven or eight quarterbacks that get routinely talked about when it comes to putting together Broncos mock drafts. Hey, you miss out on one of the guys that could go in the first round. You hear a lot about Spencer Rattler, who's generally considered the sixth guy, or maybe there's Michael Pratt, and who could be this eighth guy potentially, Cody. I don't know who it could possibly be, but it does sound like from what George and Sean both conveyed. They have done tons of homework on on all these quarterbacks. They've been flying all over the country, meeting with them. And remember, just remember this little tidbit here. Nobody knew about Sean Payton flying to Texas Tech to work out Patrick Mahomes. So don't think that you will hear everything in terms of who the Broncos are meeting with, where they're meeting with them. I think that's a significant detail there, Cody, is that we've heard some things like Michael Penix Jr. He's got a top 30 visit to the facility and, and had that already. J.J. McCarthy, they worked him out privately after his pro day, but we're not necessarily going to hear about every single one of these guys and the Broncos' interactions with them, which I think adds to the intrigue of this particular position group. Which, I mean, ideally, you don't want any leaks to get out because if you let it get out that you really like a certain guy, you're willing to do whatever it takes to get him, there could be another team who views that player very highly, and they may do whatever they can to try to get ahead of you. It's it's really just about evaluating where things are at. And look, I, I think George Pate made a fantastic point on Thursday when talking about it because I, I felt like Brandon Cristal asked a really good question about, you know, do you read into all these reports? Like, what are your thoughts on these things that come out that say you guys know exactly where you're going, you know, what you're going to do at 12 overall? And he said, we don't even know what we're going to do at 12 overall. So how does anybody else know what we're going to do? And, and basically what he meant by that, he said, you know, we once we get to the draft, like, he said, well, I've had conversations with every GM in front of us. I've had conversations with GMs and people behind us. And once you start to see how the board falls a little bit, that gives you an idea maybe on what you might have to do if you really need a guy and you feel like he's not going to be there when you pick. But overall, George and Sean really talked about they're evaluating things as they go. And look, you're going to get the standard. We, we're going to get a very good player at 12 if we stay there, which is true. Denver's going to get a good player at that position, or I mean at that uh, of the draft or they could trade up, or they could trade back. Like Every opportunity is out there for Denver based on how the board falls, but we don't know what that's going to look like yet because the draft hasn't happened, and that's all that George and Sean 
we're really trying to say. It's easy for us to do our mock draft simulators, which is a fun exercise. Don't get me wrong, but it accounts for so much that doesn't actually happen that you know you see come around on draft day. Like you see some surprise team that nobody expected to trade up all of a sudden making this big move to move forward. That could reset the entire board and how Denver's got their own big board assembled. I thought that was also a great point that Sean had talked about. You know, and apparently Sean listens to podcasts as well. So I mean. Denver is playing things by ear as it comes, and they will for the NFL draft, which I think is probably the most important approach to have. I think it is too, Cody. I think you have that ultimate flexibility there. And, and at, le- at the very least, you know, you can't, there's nothing to point back to if you go into the NFL draft and, you know, th- things don't shake out the way you expect. And somebody's like, hey, you said this before the draft. You've covered all the bases. That's what the pre-draft press mm-hmm. conference is really meant to do. It's it's to just say say everything while saying absolutely nothing, right? That's kind of the old saying. And so it's not like there was nothing of value, though, from what George said. I think at the very least, George and Sean, quite frankly, for that matter, Cody, I think obviously they're not giving anything away. But when, when he talks about seven to eight quarterbacks, you know, we know this is lying season. We know that's kind of what happens right before the NFL draft. Do you think him saying this is just I'm just spitballing after I listen to him answer the question when he says we like, you know, he he said a month or two ago, we like six or seven guys. Now he says we like seven or eight guys. It's really good quarterback draft. We really like this quarterback class. I kind of read into that and say, well, man, he wants people to think that they like the depth of this class, but maybe they really want to go after a certain guy here. Do you feel like that comment about seven to eight quarterbacks was misdirection? Like, what is your gut telling you about that? Or do you think George really does like the depth here? I I think George and Sean both like the depth. I mean, they get access to more information. And right now they're conducting group studies on like maybe players that they feel like they have a tie on. They want to see who who's going to break. And obviously they talked about pods and different groups and you know, how it's different. Like, you know, if a player may be ranked here based on overall value, but you talk about positional value, that's something we'll dive deep into here on today's episode of the show coming up here in just a moment. But I think he said one thing that's interesting. When you talk about seven to eight quarterbacks, if it's a player you feel like can change the landscape of your franchise going forward, you do what you have to to go get him. And it seems like the Broncos, that's a situation they're really monitoring in this year's NFL draft. And look, Broncos country, we want to hear from you because that segues perfectly into our next topic of discussion following the pre-draft press conference on Thursday in Dove Valley. Does positional value have a bigger impact in the eyes of the Broncos brain trust than maybe where a player is ranked overall? We'll dive deeper to that here on today's brand new episode, Locked on Broncos. Today's episode of Locked on Broncos is brought to you by our friends over there at Yahoo Finance. Wouldn't it be great if you could see all of your investment and retirement accounts in one place? With Yahoo Finance, you can consolidate your views from multiple accounts into one hub and access the expert analysis you need to tend to your entire portfolio with confidence. Yahoo Finance brings that to the table. For more than 25 years, Yahoo Finance has been the brand behind every great investor. Whether you're a seasoned investor or are looking for that extra guidance, Yahoo Finance gives you all the tools and data you need in one place. They're the number one financial destination, producing a holistic look at the financial news cycle, including breaking news, original editorial perspectives, analyst ratings, independent research, customizable charts, and so much more. For comprehensive financial news and analysis, visit the brand behind every great investor, yahoofinance.com. The number one financial destination, yahoofinance.com. That's yahoofinance.com. Should the Denver Broncos reach to fill their primary needs during the 2024 NFL draft, or should they go after the best players available? I think, Cody, there's there's maybe not necessarily one right way to build a roster in the NFL, but passing on good players, that would be a mistake for the Denver Broncos. We're going to talk about both sides of that coin, though, here on today's episode, Locked on Broncos, and want to give a shout out to every single one of you who makes Locked on Broncos your first listen of the day every single day, especially here as we approach the 2024 NFL draft where the Broncos, the future of the organization, as Peyton Manning talked about to our good friend Mike Kliss, kind of hanging the balance here with this first round draft selection, especially and the team's direction at the quarterback position. So thanks for rocking with us every single day in the offseason, free and available everywhere you get your podcasts, as well as you can watch the show on YouTube. Cody, let's talk about this because I've been having some really hearty discussions and debates behind the scenes about this topic specifically to where 
you know, situations could present themselves. George Payton said it. There's going to be a really good player there at 12 overall. I just, I, 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 I didn't purposely do this to have a player fall there, but I put together a scenario that I put on Twitter where Romo Dunze, the wide receiver from Washington, fell to the 12th overall pick. Got a lot of mixed reviews from Broncos fans about, man, you can't take a wide receiver. Who's going to throw the wide receiver the ball? Or You don't have a pass rush. How could you possibly go after a wide receiver instead of a pass rusher? This is a very interesting discussion because you talk about Sean Payton and the train and all the, the rankings across the, the globe of NFL draft prospects, things like that. Let's talk about reaching for need or best player available at 12 and, and what George Payton's thoughts were on that, what your thoughts are on that. Are you mm -hmm. building this team in order of say, hey, we need a quarterback first and then we need a pass rusher, then we need this, then that. Or are you taking a guy like Odunze over maybe, say, your fifth or sixth best quarterback prospect? It's a great question. I think it depends on who you ask, right? There's a lot of differing opinions about that. I felt like NFL Network's Daniel Jeremiah did a really tremendous job. I mean, he was asked the question about the Broncos specifically and whether or not they're equipped to win with a quarterback. He said, like, his answer was very interesting, saying that regard, like if the Broncos go with a quarterback, he feels like that quarterback has enough around him with what Sean Payton has brought to the table in terms of offense and personnel that he feels like you're not going to have to worry about sitting him for a year. Like he's going to play right away. Like, and you're not worried about that maybe impacting his development. So Daniel Jeremiah is probably one of the guys that I honestly do trust a lot in terms of how he evaluates players. I think he goes you know very deep in the process, but you see differing opinions all across the board. Right? I don't think a lot of Broncos fans will agree with what Daniel said. I feel like I kind of agree with what Daniel says a little bit. I think that Denver does have some pretty good personnel around. I mean, obviously you can add and brushing up some areas of your team, but you know, you don't draft a quarterback who's going to be a rookie and just sit him for a year, like just throw him out there and, and, and let him play. Like you're not going to get better sitting on the bench. It's not always something that equates to success in the NFL, but I do feel like one thing that George had said, and, and there, there was the conversation about reaching, he said, you know, a lot of it, it just depends on how they feel about a player. And this is goes back to that train or that NFL van that Sean Payton is always talking about that, you know, you can't always stay on it. Like if you're, if you're, you can listen to it a little bit, but don't stay on it to a point where it's going to guide what you decide to do. Because a lot of times the people driving the van don't have the information that the coaching staff and that the, you know, the internal discussions they've had about them. Like you got to understand, I think Sean outlined this great. When they meet with these prospects, not just quarterbacks, the day before they meet with them, they send them a bunch of material and they have them study that. And that way, when they go into the meeting, they ask them a, a variety of different questions. And I thought Sean had asked a, you know, a very interesting question. Yeah, it could have been to a quarterback prospect, but he said, you know, we will send him a bunch of plays. Like if we, if we took you, you know, at, with the 12th pick overall, and you had to bring a play with you that was a guaranteed success, what play would you bring with you? And how would you call it? Like, what is it called in terms of terminology? But you, you go into these conversations and what many people perceive to be a reach, I think, Sarah, the overall consensus is that everybody's opinion, mine, yours, the fans listening to the show, everyone has a different opinion about the value they think a player has or how good or how bad a player is. And it differs across the board. What matters ultimately, and this became very clear from George and Sean, if we feel great about a player, we're going to do whatever we can to go get him. And that's the thing that they talked about as well. But that kind of leads us into the conversation here, Sarah. Both overall, we don't know how the board is going to fall there. And based on how player rankings happen on the team's big boards individually, I thought George and Sean said something different about each position carries a different weight depending on player ranking and things like that. I felt like that was interesting to hear from them because that could even mean that Denver doesn't even look at quarterback with the 12th overall pick. Right, because premium positions are multiple in the NFL. We know the most important position is the quarterback position, but there's lots of premium positions that factor into your overall roster building tactics. And that's, you know, positions like quarterback, edge, interior defensive line nowadays, wide receiver, offensive tackle. Just so happens that a lot of these positions are really great in this year's draft and could benefit the Denver Broncos in a variety of ways. I think what you just mentioned, Cody, and Sean Payton alluded to a podcast that Bill Belichick did, one of the podcasts that you you mentioned that he had listened to. Sean and listens Bill to Bel us. I know that. Sean Sean listens. He's hearing things. You know, if you you may be the random person on Twitter that Sean clicks on your article someday, but look, I think what Bill Belichick said on that podcast that Payton referenced is really important. He said, like at, at the beginning of the draft. Things are already wildly different for all 32 teams. When you when you're just say you're at pick number one 
and you know you're working from this you know okay the top 10 picks let's just say there is even close to a consensus of the top 10 he says amongst that that the closer you are to the beginning of the draft it's convoluted across the league of what teams think about players xyz the further away that you get from the first overall pick the crazier different everybody's boards are going to be because people have guys graded differently based on their personality, based on the, the pace at which they learn, based on what their scout found out from the barber that they get their haircut from. I mean, it's all different. And so when, when you see the draft unfolding, it's going to be impossible really to say that the Broncos or anybody is reaching on somebody because we have no idea what went into that evaluation and certainly, you know, there are some guys that are just more talented physically. They put forth more production at the college level. But when it comes to positional, you know, priority, there are certain spots that I think the Broncos would have to say above above others, right? When you're talking about a pass catcher, a quarterback, edge, interior defensive line, those are the types of guys that the Broncos really, they, George Payton said it, we need to come away with an impact player in the first round, a 12 overall. That impact player could be at any of those positions based on where the Broncos currently are and based on what he said about liking the quarterback class. So to me, Cody, I don't think there's a right or or wrong way necessarily to go about it in terms of, hey, you may say Bo Nix is worth the 12th overall pick over Romo Dunze or Brock Bowers. Somebody else is going to say you're insane to pass on Romo Dunze or Brock Bowers for Bo Nix. And, and that's how it really is in NFL rooms. I mean, that's how certain teams think. And so it's it's I like what George said, you know, if there is weight given to the quarterback position, there is weight given to edge and to these premier position groups at, you know, let's say you have somebody ranked 12 overall and another guy's ranked way, way lower on your board. They do factor those things in, which I think is important to note here as we're one week away from the draft. You know, one thing I'll talk about as well, because this is a, a question that always gets brought up. And I feel like the discussion is kind of mixed a little bit about where you know, everyone prefers you, me, fans listening to the show. Should you draft a player based on your need or should you just draft the best player? Now, I'm going to throw a little anomaly in there, Sarah. What if your biggest need and the best player are there? I feel like that's an easy question. You go out and you do it. But my overall philosophy, if I was a general manager, which I'm not, my overall philosophy would be I'm going to draft the best player available. I'm not going to necessarily draft based on need. Because sometimes you got to figure out, is the scheme fit going to work? Is the overall locker room culture fit, community fit? Is that something that's going to match the standard of what the Broncos need from a player coming into a new situation from the college level? Now, if you run into the situation where your biggest need and the best player available happen to still be there when you're on the clock or within spitting range and being able to move up a couple spots, then absolutely, you take that shot. And I think that's something that George and Sean themselves have said, hey, if we have to, we're comfortable. And I felt like it was interesting. George did say, like, sometimes... There in the draft, Sean will be like, I really want this player. Go get him. And then he's going to do whatever he can to make that happen. But, you know, there's contingencies upon, like, you know, the teams that they want to call, if they want to go up to get a guy, is that team willing to maybe swap with them? So on and so forth. Like, there's so many different variables that go into the conversations that are going to happen on the NFL draft. I think it makes for you know, a wild, wild circus event, which is why I appreciate that there are no leaks coming from Denver's building. Because I feel like that would ruin the surprise. Like it was different when John L was the GM and he was talking to guys like Woody Page and Mike Gliss, and it was kind of leaning like, hey, this is where they're leaning. It's because those people talk to John Elway directly. And John would give that information out like it was candy. That's not the case here with George Payton. I think it makes Broncos country a little anxious, but I think it makes the overall process more fun, Sarah. And I think ultimately that's what it boils down to. Will Denver get the impact player? If you know, 12th overall, or if they trade up, or if they trade back, they have to. That's going to be the only guaranteed surefire approach to it. They have to get an impact player of value. But we also got some other news and notes from Thursday's press conference in Dove Valley. In terms of their agreeance, whether or not they agree or disagree on a player, how does George and Sean Payton maybe discuss if they feel different about a player when they want to go up and maybe draft the guy? We'll break that down here on today's brand new episode of Locked On Broncos. Today's Lockdown Broncos podcast is brought to you by our friends over there at Monopoly Go. And we've all been there, either as a player or as a fan. It's halftime, and the scoreboard is not looking so good. You're feeling low. You're not sure you or your team can pull out a win. That's when you dig deep. Lift your head up and say to yourself, time to get back in the game. Pull off some bank heists and take as much of my friend's money as I possibly can. You can do that all exclusively on the Monopoly Go app. That's right. The smash hit mobile game Monopoly Go lets you compete with your friends to get the most riches and the biggest empire. 
It's the monopoly you love, but on your phone anytime with tons of new twists, including leaderboards to compare your progress to your buddies. There's so much to do. Play on countless dynamic Monopoly boards, make your friends bankrupt by smashing their landmarks with a wrecking ball, and charge other players rent for your iconic properties. You can even work with your friends to crack open community chests and in tournaments to get extra rewards and climb the leaderboard. So get back out there, put on your game face, and download Monopoly Go now, free on the App Store or Google Play. Disagreements happen all the time in life, in the NFL world, and sometimes in draft rooms. But for the Denver Broncos, that's not the case for George Payton and for Sean Payton. Thank you so much, Broncos country, for tuning in once again to another episode of Locked On Broncos here on the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Just a reminder, if you love watching Locked On Broncos on YouTube, make sure you get us and take us with you on the go wherever you get your podcasts as well, wherever you get your podcasts. We have you covered every single day, all year long. Some other news and notes from the Thursday's press conference. You pre-draft presser, you hear it all across the entire NFL from various teams. I mean, I was scouring social media, kind of listening along to some other teams and maybe some teams ahead of Denver that could need a quarterback. And you kind of hear a lot of the same terminology, you hear a lot of the same conversations. We're open to trading you know, back. We're open to staying put. We maybe want to trade up in the draft. Like you hear it from various teams, not just Denver. But I think one conversation and maybe one thing that gets brought up a lot, I think some people have asked it, well, what if Sean and George are in the draft and when Denver's on the clock and they disagree about a player, according to George and Sean, like that's something that honestly never happens. And in George's 20 years, he said that's, that's nothing that never happens because they have these conversations during their draft meetings and the buildup to where things are at for when Denver does get on the clock. I felt like that was something that's usually asked and analyzed by fans, but now we got an answer for sure by Sean and for George in that situation. And they kind of gave an example to right of a, Hey, a guy's there in the fifth round. Uh, you've already had a discussion about 10 players that could be available in the fifth round. And by the time that pick gets there, you know, you're liable to be looking at only one or two of them. So it really does happen beforehand. A lot of times I don't think there's going to be a ton of situations that you're not prepared for during the NFL draft. Like, like, like these guys have talked about, I mean, you may get thrown for a loop by not knowing what's going to happen, but you have a plan in case anything happens, right? You have a guy that you want, or you have a guy that you want to trade up for. You like certain a certain number of players that you feel, hey, we can trade down seven, eight spots here and still get one of the top guys on our board. But that's where, like you said, it kind of comes into play of, okay, Sean Payton says, I want this guy. That may be the determining factor days ahead of time, weeks ahead of time. As we talked about at the beginning of April, the Broncos mentioned at the annual NFL League meeting that they were finalizing and solidifying their boards here in the first week of this month. So we're already past the point where the board has been finalized and we know those discussions have been happening. They're putting, you know, dotting the I's, crossing the T's on all these different reports and things like that. And now it's just differentiating. So, Cody, to me, I, I feel like a lot of people want to make a, a friction filled you know, storyline between George and Sean Payton. It just feels like these two guys work really well together. And, and it, it feels like they understand how each other likes to build a team. And that may cause a little fire and ice in rooms behind closed doors that we see, but certainly not going to cause a lack of focus or anything like that during the draft. I think as for as, as much as people want to make George Payton out to be a bad guy and watch, you know, him to be gone and for Sean Payton to have total control, like these guys, they vibe really well. You can just tell by how they interact with one another, how, you know, you hear one question, you know, who's going to answer the question first. Like they understand it. Like they have a really good dynamic. And I've been saying this for a while. I like, Sarah, I'm at the team facility every day in the season and I get to see these guys work together. I see them in practice where George comes up, you know, while the team is going through stretch and he's sitting there, he's talking to Sean. And then all of a sudden, a couple hours later, Denver makes a free agency move or they sign a guy or they make a personnel change. Like they're very much in sync with it. And look, George's job is to get Sean, whatever he needs to have to feel the best competitive team possible, but they really talked about the background in terms of scouting. I think that's where Sean and George really align. Not only that, but their scouting department, they feel very good about what they have there going forward. But I think that also kind of opens things up as well. Some in-house looks, you know, George was asked a little bit about, you know, how do they view the cornerback room? How do they view their own edge rusher room this year? And George said, that, you know, they have a young room. They have the best cornerback in football and Patrick Sertan. They like their nickel and Jaquan McMillan. They even mentioned that they like their two young guys there in Damari Mathis and Riley Moss. But it's always one of those positions where you're also looking to add to it. He also said the same exact thing for the edge rush room that has Jonathan Cooper, Baron Browning, 
and Nick Benito and, uh, you know, some other question marks that arise there at that position. Right, which would be Drew Sanders. And so the the question marks linger on about Drew Sanders because he said if Drew stays at the edge, which I guess means that he's moved to the edge at this point, and now you have to kind of figure out maybe it's going to be dependent on what happens in the NFL draft. And I can't help but wonder, Cody, if, if the edge position is kind of shoved near the top of the list for the first round here. I mean, Broncos Peter fans Schrager. are absolutely nuts. Peter Schrager's mock has the Broncos taking Latu from UCLA. I've seen Jared Verse. I've seen Dallas Turner. I've seen all of these other situations. Broncos could move back. I know Chop Robinson from Penn State is another guy who's gaining a lot of traction these days. So it's really a fascinating situation with Drew Sanders that, I mean, yeah, they called him a pressure player when he came into the league, but you figured that was going to be as, you know, a, a weapon of his as an off ball inside linebacker, not an edge guy, especially when you have three guys that you like. Notice that he didn't lump Drew in with the likes of Jonathan Cooper, Nick Benito, and Baron Browning. He was kind of like, oh, yeah. And by the way, we have Drew Sanders. So I, I, I feel like his situation, Cody, is a little bit frustrating. But another point from that Belichick podcast that's worth remembering. He said with the Patriots, this may not be the same for everybody, but he said with the Patriots, they don't really evaluate like where a guy is at until after the midway point of his second season in the league. So you give him a lot of time to grow, to learn, to maybe carve out a role. So we'll see where Drew Sanders is at this summer, but I think it's going to be more so mid season of this year till we really find out where the Broncos are at on that long-term vision with him. I feel like Coach Klein right now on the water boy where he's sitting there, you know, inside the locker room. He's on the chalkboard. And he's trying to figure out. And he's like, you know, it's a pass. No, it's a run. No, it's a pass. But like for Drew Sanders, is he an edge rusher? Is he an off-ball linebacker? Is he an edge rusher? Like, I, I feel like Drew at this position is just in flux. But I do think that's a great point because, look, I think it's very evident that Sean clearly has a lot of respect for Bill Belichick. And I think Sean takes inspiration from various coaches. He's even mentioned he's taken inspiration from Mike Shanahan about – how they run the offense and what they plan to do offensively in certain, you know, aspects or personnel groupings. But you also look at it from a standpoint, like everyone is so quick. And this is why I applaud Sean on this, us in the content creator mill, right? Our job is to create content every day. Right. And one of the things you see after the draft, grading the Broncos draft 2024, like, and then it's like, this is an A, this is a B. And they're just like, I, Sean's like, I hate grades because it's like, you won't know until midway through year two, maybe going into year three, where this player truly is. And, you can grade what you think it could be. You talk a lot about maybe projecting, but the reality is we're not going to know until we actually see the player in action and not just a small sample size, but a larger sample size. Do they take a step forward? Like I think Nick Benito is a great example. Rookie season, we're like, I don't know what Nick Benito's outlook on this team is going to be. Like you and I were talking about it. He may be competing for a spot on the 53 going into training camp. And then all of a sudden he comes out, has a great training camp, but has the biggest jump from year one to year two. But I remember a lot of people after the 2022 season were like, the Nick Benito draft was, you know, drafting him was an F. I saw a lot of F grades. But now all of a sudden he turns on a great year, second leading sack artist on the team. And all of a sudden it's like, hey, like now I'm very excited about Nick Benito. Like that's the common consensus that you do see. Like it's easy to make judgments right away, but it's a process to let it play out. And it seems like George and Sean are very much on the same board of developing players letting things play out, but it is very interesting to know, like what is the vision here for Drew Sanders going into his second season? That's something that we're probably not going to find out until after we see the NFL draft happen. We'll see what personnel moves Denver makes in terms of adding guys to different position groups and overall we'll formulate our best thought process on what does this mean for the team going forward and how can they compete? But that will wrap up today's episode locked on Broncos, Broncos country, George Payton, Sean Payton, meeting with us, giving us a lot of insight into maybe their vision for the NFL draft, but not giving away information that may tip their hand. The NFL draft is next week, and the buildup to it is going to be spectacular. Sarah Bettinger will have you covered, though, on Monday's episode, Lockdown Broncos. He will conduct one final mock draft. Will Sarah be aggressive in his approach, or is he going to let the board fall to him and pick number 12? Well, tune in on Monday's episode, Lockdown Broncos, to find out more.